In the previous uh, lecture, we discussed about pre-procedural preparation of the patient who has to undergo cardiac CT. Now we shall see uh, what is required once the patient is on the table. First and foremost, IV cannula. A wider bore IV cannula should always be used, preferably an 18 gauge because the flow of contrast uh, in cardiac CT always ranges fr from 5 to 6 ml. We prefer to take the uh, IV line on the dorsum of the hand rather than the anticubital fossa because the vein might bend uh, when the patient is asked to raise his hands above the head during acquisition and hence increases the chances of extravasation of contrast. Routinely we use the left hand for IV cannulation. However, in post bypass cases, the right hand is preferred this is purely because we want to avoid the contrast in the left brachiocephalic vein to obscure the origin of the lima artery in post bypass cases. Before we start the scan, uh, we should be sure that the injector is connected to the tubing. Uh, this is even before taking the topogram. A word about the uh, central line it should not be used for uh, injecting contrast in cardiac ct as the rate of injection is high as i just told you an 18 gauge iv cannula is you know, necessary when we want to use a high flow rate as we do in cardiac ct now going on to fixing of leads so once the iv cannula has been placed we should ask the patient to raise his hands above his head position him properly as we want him for the scan and only then place the leads. It is essential that there is good contact established for the leads. Hence, uh, locally shaving that area is very important and use of ECG gel always helps in increasing the contact with the underlying skin. Also, once the leads have been placed, you should look at the ECG trace no diagnosis has to be made upon the ECG trace that is being shown on the monitor. However, there should be no tremors in the baseline. There should be no waveform ECG. Like it should the ECG trace should not move with each breath hold and breathing it. This is a diagram which tells us how the the wires of the ECG leads should be kept out of the scan field. This is very important as these may lead to artifacts while acquiring the scan. Sometimes in spite of doing everything, it might uh, we might still not get a good ECG trace. In that case, we can always place the electrodes at the back. There is no particular order in which we need to place them. But we definitely need to place one lead below and two on either side near the scapula. Now what is a good heart rate that needs to be achieved in a basic 64 slice scanner? The heart rate has to be less than 65 beats per minute. This holds true for any scanners less than 64 slice. Why is it important to have a low heart rate? Uh, let's just understand the concept of temporal resolution. The heart uh, is at its least motion during the end diastolic phase of the RR cycle. So when we have a low heart rate, the RR interval is more and hence that an end diastolic phase is also of a longer duration. Hence, we can capture the heart when it is in its least motion for a longer time. This is what is a simple explanation about temporal resolution. In this uh, graph, if we notice, for the heart rate, which are less than 70, the diastolic phase is longer and hence the exposure time is also longer, almost up to 250 millisecond, which is what is the temporal resolution of the scanner for the lower heart rates. As the heart rate increases from 70 to 120, the exposure time reduces, that is the temporal resolution reduces to as low as 100 milliseconds. Going on to breath hold, so once the IV cannula has been inserted, uh, the ECG leads have been placed and a good ECG trace is obtained. We communicate with the patient and explain to him the breath hold. 
uh, it is important to communicate and practice on the table before beginning the scan if the patient is not able to comply we can either pinch the nose or nose as well as mouth uh, mouth can be held so as to prevent the patient breathing in through the mouth at times it might happen that the patient is very sick and cannot really uh, obey the command and hence should at the such time should be allowed to slowly breathe out the at from the point where they cannot hold their breath now a use of nitroglycerin again very important it helps it it is a vasodilator effect and hence gets better filling in of the coronary arteries a uh, sublingual spray or uh, two puffs can be given uh, normally we give just after the topogram before starting the calcium score it leads to a mild transient rise in the heart rate and hence if we give it before the calcium score by the time uh, we acquire the contrast and hence phase the heart rate also settles in and at the same time we also get vasodilatation however it is important to check the bp before using the ntg spray and it should not be used when the systolic pressure is below 100 and diastolic is below 60 contrast media protocol optimal strength and volume of contrast should be used normally we prefer to use a high iodine containing contrast that is 400 mg of contrast for uh, imaging the coronary arteries however there has been a recent uh, trend to use a low iodinated contrast with a low kvp imaging for non non obese patients the same can be applied even for ct coronary angio the principle behind that this is that uh, at low tube voltage there is increase in the photoelectric effect of iodine it tends to absorb more x rays at low kvp and this increases the ct value of contrast within the coronary arteries practically what we do is for a patient of average build that is 70 or less than 70 kg we use around 75 ml of contrast following which for every kg increase in the body weight 2 ml of contrast can be increased practically speaking for a patient who is more than 70 kg till 90 kg we end up using 100 ml of contrast and for a patient who is more than that we end up using 110 to 120 ml of contrast this is followed by a saline flush of 40 ml now rate of injection we normally tend to keep it 5 to 6 ml per second though by physic injections have been described what we normally follow is a uniphasic injection of 5 to 6 ml per second same rate of contrast uh, same rate of injection is also used for a saline flush and uh, it is important that while giving the breath hold instruction we also inform the patient about the heat that the contrast would generate in its in his body especially in the groin region this helps us in better patient compliance important of saline chaser it not only helps us in pushing in the extra contrast which would otherwise remain in the veins of the extremity so that contrast gets completely utilized and secondly it also helps us to reduce the artifacts caused by presence of contrast in the right heart it flushes the right heart the superior vena cava brachiocephalic vein right atrium and right ventricle and helps in better visualization of the right coronary artery what are the precautions we need to take with the injector we make sure that we don't use the central line we do not end up keeping loose connections near the cannula so that the contrast would just leak out and la- most important is always check once the iv cannula has been placed for a chance of extravasation so we have to double check for extravasation in case of extravasation we follow the rice protocol in addition to the rice protocol we also apply thrombophobe and prescribe anti inflammatory to the patient next we shall be going to acquisition and then cardiac anatomy in the third talk thank you